it's on there. Um, that was kind of interesting. Um, there's not really a good way to hold those ramps down. Uh, that'll have to be figured out. And I'll change that somehow. Um, and again, without having that log stop, the third log stop, you know, I had to had the log set towards the back and it made it even harder to get it pulled up there. Um, but we got it up there. We got the log dog on there holding it in place. So I guess let's raise it up and, you know, kind of figure out our height. Uh, yeah, I did roll it on the ground. It's probably got rocks and dirt and all types of stuff in the bark. Um, I don't have a debarker yet. Um, that, that'll be something I invest in later. Um, this is the stock blade that come on it. So it's supposed to be for softwoods. Um, we're just gonna try it out. I do have two carbide blades that I ordered with it. Um, and I'll end up changing those after I figure out, you know, how to run it, if it's gonna run good and other things like that. I do have some water and some Dawn uh, in the coolant tank or water tank, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna run that on it, but let's go ahead and raise it up and figure out uh, about what height we wanna try at least get the first cut with the bark coming off. Just like all logs, or most logs, one side is bigger than the other, so um, I'm nose down up here in the front. Um, so I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to take some of the bigger end off and get it close to, you know, down here on this end and see if we can get something a little bit flatter instead of, you know, trying to cut all the way through and making this crazy looking off cut. So uh, I have started it before. I uh, started it yesterday a couple times and let it run for a little bit. Uh, it seems like if you pull it on choke two or three times, uh, then put it on run, it'll start right up. Uh, So the blade's still tracking how I had it set yesterday. Uh, so I guess let's go ahead and turn some coolant on and see if we can get this first cut done. coming out so got some coolant now let's uh let's try this it's crump we got coolant looks like the blade's tracking right 
Alright, so let's try this first cut. Alright, so it uh I mean it cut pretty decent. Let's uh let's look at it. It definitely cut it. Um there's a couple places, you know, like right here where I bound the blade up, I was trying to push too hard. Um this log has been sitting for I don't know six, seven months something like that so he's still he's not he's not green green he's definitely not dry but um and i mean it looks like i got a, a pretty flat cut And you have it tracking right and then it decides it wants to do this number right here um you know i, I think it's because of the wobble in the in the wheel let's set it down so i can see if i can get it back how it was But let me see if I can get this out of the way. You can see a little bit better what I'm talking about. If you look at this wheel right here, the tension is off the blade, but you know, that whole thing wobbles. You know, all of these are tight. It's just the the adjustment method they have in there or whatever, it uh it just likes to wobble. So I guess let's uh let's get a rent. We want this guy to come over some. All 
Alright, so we got them to move. I guess we'll, uh, we'll just leave them there. And see if that helps. And I'll tell you, I'm not a professional. I've never, uh, never run a bandsaw mill. Never used a bandsaw mill. I just was tired of, you know, running the chainsaw mill on everything. So we'll tighten all this stuff up. And the way he keeps wanting to kick to the front on this side, I guess when we spin it by hand, let's spin it by hand and see how it's tracking now. Well, you got a tighten blade up. Let me move you out. Let's see if that's any better. It'll probably come off soon to start it. That's just how things are for me.
All right, so it cuts. Um, yeah, it cuts. I mean, it, it's a decent cut, but I had a, a few mishaps. Um, but like I said, that's why I was leaving the stock blade on it before I put the carbide blade. See where I forgot to drop this? Um, the log stopped and I hit it with the blade. Uh, that tore the blade up. Uh, and then having the, you know, having the bark on there with all the rocks and all that stuff in it, definitely, uh, definitely did a number on the blade. Um, it, I guess it works. You can see, uh, you see I burnt the crap out of the blade. It's definitely a whole lot faster and easier than running the chainsaw mill. Um, and if I would have had, you know, the carbide blade on there, it would have cut a whole lot better. Um, the stock blade is supposed to be for, for soft woods, you know, pine and, uh, things like that. Um, but again, I didn't want to risk putting the nice carbide blade on there and tearing it up, uh, which I would have. Cause it likes to shake, uh, while you're cutting and that might just be cause the blade was getting dull. So when I put it together, I uh, tried my best to get the slack out of the throttle cable, but it's not all the way out. Even with the throttle all the way pulled, I still have, you know, a little bit of, a little bit left for full throttle and I could turn it up some. I don't know if it, it might be the clutch is slipping uh, because it's not going full throttle, but you know, we'll find out it did cut and you know, Again, like I said, it's faster than chainsaw mill, um, less work than chainsaw mill. Uh, getting the log up there was kind of interesting, but all in all, you know, is it worth the money? Uh, yes, yeah, since I spent less than what I would have getting from a U.S. supplier, I'd say, yeah, it was worth the money. There's a few tweaks, a few things I need to change and uh, modify. Until next time.